Hi, my name's Will, this is Chris, John, and Barry, and we built Gamer. Gamer is a universal gamification app for group-based tasks. It's built using Node, SQLize, Angular, Express, and Postgres. So for, for this example, we chose household tasks as our use case because it illustrates a lot of key features of the app. So in this example, roommates or siblings could compete to complete tasks uh, for points and ultimately monetary rewards. At the beginning of every game, uh, players contribute a predetermined pledge amount to a, pl a pot, which is then distributed at the end of the game back to the players, pro rata based on how many points they accumulate during the game. So we integrated with Dwala API to seamlessly transfer uh, ACH payments between uh, players' bank accounts all behind the scenes. So with Gamer, that roommate or sibling that claims to do the most tasks around the house will be finally recognized and rewarded for all their hard work. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Chris, who's going to talk a little bit about in-game chronology. Thank you, Will. Right before I get into that, uh, I just wanted to discuss our models real briefly. So our users and games exist in a many-to-many -many relationship, and we needed to be able to keep track of a user's status within any particular game. And we also need to keep track of a game status at any point in time. So to illustrate this, when you as a user create a game and invite your friends, they will all have a status of invited. Should they accept their invitation, their status will switch to unconfirmed. That's because games at this point are still editable. So you can then, when you're happy with the composition of the game, choose to lock the game. Players will then be asked to confirm their participation in the game, and that will serve as their contract. Once the game start date is reached, its tasks will be switched to active, and users can complete tasks and accumulate points. Upon completion of the game, users will receive an email totaling up who owes who how much. For more on what's going on in the background here, I'll hand it to John. Thanks, Chris. So once all the players accept the invitations and the commissioner locks the game, two background jobs are created. Uh, one emails all the players at the, state, at the start date time, notifying them the game has begun. And the second emails all the players at the end date time with the resolution details, as you can see behind me. Uh, to do this, we use crons and an NPM module called node schedule. Uh, we made the decision to persist the cron data in the back end through a cron model, so that if the node process ever crashes and we lose all the cron, da cron data, uh, upon restart of the process, we automatically search through the cron data and reschedule all those lost jobs accordingly. We also bifurcated our backend into a cluster of node server processes and a worker process that does all the scheduling work. Uh, this makes our app a little bit faster and a little bit more stable. And uh, if our worker process ever crashes, we can still handle client requests without any issue. We also built a real-time messaging service in our app, uh, setting up each game as essentially its own chat room. Uh, Every, uh, we store the messages in the back end through a message model with a game ID, uh, timestamp, and user field. And this allows our players to kind of communicate in a fun and engaging way throughout the edit and gameplay phase. And for more on the dashboard, here's Barry. Thanks, John. Uh, so as you can see, on the user's dashboard, uh, every game in which a user is an active participant is displayed with two charts that we created using Angular NVD3. The first chart is a pie chart that shows the breakdown of the total points earned in the game thus far by the player who earned them. And the second chart shows how much money above or below the initial pledge the player would receive if the game ended with the current point distribution. On the dashboard, we also allow users to accept invitations to draft games and to confirm their participation in games. I also want to talk a little bit about our news feed directives, which are two custom directives that we built uh, to display Ta events that have happened in the game or events connected to a particular task in a game. Uh, in order to populate these and to also keep track of how the game progresses, we had to come up with a model that unified the user entity, the game entity, and the task entity, including its points at attribute. We did so and included a timestamp with the event model that then we can use to both populate the directive and to keep track of who earns points when in a game. Uh, this has been Gamer. Thanks for your time today, and you can check us out at gamer.life.